Hey everyone, welcome back to the OTG YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk to you about patrol formation basics. If you don't know what that means, essentially it's walking around out in the open. That's what you're going to be watching. However, the context of this whole video is that we're just trying to show you principle-based approaches to these movements. We're just showing you three movements, even though there's multiple formations and ways to handle these formations. Um, this video is for anybody of any background. You could be maybe military and you using this as a refresher. You could be maybe in law enforcement and you do rural operations, manhunts, all that kind of stuff. You might be a civilian who just wants to understand maybe a system of how to move outside. This is not CQB per se. And you're just trying to get the basics down. I will say that this kind of video and any of the videos on our channel are not substitutes for actually attending a course. If you want to go to a class on this stuff, there's a few places that teach this for civilians. But we teach these classes for civilians through Blake Flannery. He has uh, his own company, Maneuver Training Solutions, and when he works with us through Maneuver, um, he teaches small unit maneuvering, small unit sustainment, or SUS, so you can go get SUS in the woods with Blake. Um, he also teaches uh, Fire and Maneuver, or FAM. Uh, contingencies of unit movement. You can spell that one out yourself. Final answer, come. There's all kinds of stuff he teaches that has to do with this stuff outside moving around in whatever environment, whether that is urban movement and that's called black side movement, or if that is uh, out in the woods or out in the open, um, non-urban environments, it's called green side. And that comes from his background in force reconnaissance in the Marine Corps. So while this is coming from his curriculum, it is also based on Jason and his experience in the Marine Corps and Jungle Warfare School and some of those other things. Uh, a little bit from my experience in law enforcement working rural operations, um, which again is just the military stuff watered down and regurgitated for cops to be able to do. So what you're getting is something for people of all backgrounds from people of all backgrounds. Uh, we're going to cover a file movement, some people call it a ranger file. Uh, staggered column, which I know has other names and other doctrines, and a wedge. Three basic formations. There's other formations that we're not going to talk about simply because of time constraints, losing people's interest, and some of those formations are kind of niche um, and we didn't feel it was worth covering all in one video. We may do another video on that another time. Um, we're going to talk about the hand signals that are used in each of these formations. Those hand signals are super simple easy to remember, um, kind of a, almost like a sign language. It's nothing crazy. Uh, we're going to talk about the roles of the individuals involved in these formations. And there's some things that if you have background experience in this, you're going to be asking, for example, you know, where are the rockets? Uh, where's the squad support weapon? Um, well, this video is for everybody and most people watching it don't have access to that. Um, what about assaulting through? What about reacting to contact? What about setting up an L-shaped ambush? What about a hasty ambush? all different videos. This video is just about the formations themselves and how to actually conduct those formations. Uh, super simple, this is 101 stuff, guys. You might be thinking like, okay, well I know this, I'm not gonna watch the video. That's cool, but no matter who you are, your background, your experience, you may hear a different way of doing this or see something different about it that may be interesting or you can add into your toolbox because it might come from a different background than yours. So. We've talked about the context, we've talked about the content. And before we go any further, I want to thank the biggest sponsor of our channel, which is Texas Loot. Uh, it's texas-loot.com. Uh, we are partnered with them for supply, so ammunition, firearms, night vision. Um, they carry ferro concepts, uh, armors and plate carriers. Um, that's the soft armor, the hard plates. Um, they carry other brands of hard plates. They carry pretty much anything you can think of. Uh, it's an FFL, so if you need to order something through them, they do a great job of that. Just check them out, and if you go there, use code SQUATS, which is a joke about the size of my ass. Uh, that's S-Q-U-A-T-S. And that'll get you free shipping on whatever it is. Um, so texasloot.com. Um, let's talk about the first, and I guess the, um, 
the biggest thing. Um, what is a file? A file is basically walking in a straight line. Why would we ever do that if we are really under the threat of getting shot at or we think we might be opposed? Well, typically the uh, terrain um, is going to drive you into that shape. A lot of these formations are based on terrain. But for the context of these videos, we're trying to show you what the formation looks like. And it's easiest to do that in open space. So you'll see it in some context near a tree line in a space between a high grass field and a tree line. Um, you'll see the guys walking along, which you'll also see it being done in an open field. So um, the file is used when moving through dense brush uh, or dense spaces. Um, one of the things that you have to maintain during any of these movements is eye contact or the capability to have eye contact between the next person. So if you're all walking in a straight line, cool. Now if you see in the video these guys walking in a file, their dispersion is maybe three to five yards between each other. That would be unacceptable real world. And the reason why is it's really easy for an opponent to engage multiple people at once, whether that's with a uh, squad weapon, uh, some kind of explosive, hand grenades, rockets, or whatever. More than one guy is going to get smoked at a time. So real world dispersion is probably closer to 20 to 30 yards, not 3 to 5 yards. But again, we're not going to be able to film that with what we've got and the space we're working in, and it doesn't serve for the best demo of what the movements look like themselves. So uh, what you're looking at right now is guys moving from a uh, long halt. Uh, we'll talk about that separately in a bit. And they're moving into a file. Okay, That file is just a long line, and they're walking through an open field. Um, that could be serving multiple purposes, walking through trees, walking through brush, trying to keep you know, eye contact in a narrow space. Think about an alleyway. Or uh, for you guys that are in the military and have done a lot of urban combat uh, early in the War on Terror, think about the uh, long roads and narrow spaces that you might have to deal with in an urban environment. So file has a lot of uses, but it has a lot of cons. Um, we'll talk about some more of those cons in other videos, like in the React to Contact videos. Just think about where you're going to get engaged from. You get shot at from the front and you're walking in a file, you got one guy. Okay. Um, what about a staggered column? A staggered column is essentially just two lines, two files, and they're offset. So that, again, talking about pros and cons of reacting to contact, if you're engaged from one side or the other, you have more firepower almost immediately available. If you're engaged from the front of the back, you have at least two people up front or in the back that can engage. It gives you a little bit better dispersion, it gives you some uh, better angles, and you're able to adjust and move. Um, we'll talk about in other videos some of how that stuff plays together, and you'll, you'll see more videos on that. But for the purposes of this video, again, those guys starting at a long halt, 360 security, and they start moving and they immediately disperse out into that stagger column playing off of each other. Uh, where's the situation you would actually use this? Uh, really wide open roads, um, big open spaces, uh, maybe in a forest or in a wooded environment where it's not so dense you have to be in a file, but it's dense enough that you don't want to be too spread out in a wedge. Uh, so make it make sense for your environment, make it make sense for what you think the realistic threats are while you're doing these things. And that takes us into the next one which is a wedge. Um, again, starting from that long halt and being told by their element leader to push out into a wedge, you can see those guys start to move and disperse. And the wedge is basically an arrowhead formation or like the Greek letter alpha. What this gives you is fire superiority in almost any direction. If you're engaged from the front, pretty much everybody can shoot. Left and right, you'll have to get online and you'll see that in other videos. Um, so. All of, those video, all of those movements are pretty straightforward. It's a straight line, it's two straight lines offset, or it is a wedge formation. Now what are the hand signals to signal each of these formations? Well, if we want to tell the person in front or behind us that we want to assume a new formation, we're gonna give a hand signal. We could yell it, right? But what's that giving the bad guy? If we're trying to move quietly, maybe we're doing this at night, um, we just don't want to give away any extra information that we don't have to, just like we've talked about in our CQB videos, nonverbal communication can be essential. So for this, the file is a very simple hand chop, and if you give that 
up and down hand chop in front of your face signal to somebody, they have to echo it back to you. That's actually gonna be done for every hand signal. Um, the staggered column is gonna be left and right individual hand chops downward. And notice that in all of these videos with hand signals, we're not waving our arms above our heads, we're not doing anything crazy. Everything is low profile, gentle movements. Um, so that staggered column hand motion is reflected back and forth, and then also a wedge, which is both hands moving at the same time from the center of the chest out into something like that Greek letter alpha or an inverted V, or maybe you could call it even an A. But those are three distinct symbols, and each of those um, needs to be repeated by the person you're looking at and so on. Now what's cool about the way these hand signal systems work is that if you're in the back of the stack and you need something to happen, you can give that signal from the back and because we're maintaining 360 security, we're walking around, looking around at all times, the person in front of you should be turning around and checking on you, you know, five seconds or so every time. Turns around and sees that hand signal being given, he repeats it up the line and soon it's communicated to everyone and we're good to go. So that kind of brings us into talking about what are the people's responsibilities? What are they supposed to be doing when they're doing all this? Well, we've talked a little bit about element leader. There's also point man, and then there's just the rifleman in the squad. Again, we didn't talk about, there's no, there's no saw gunner, there's no rocketeer. Um, we don't have mortarmen. This is just the basics of the formation. So let's start at the top and we'll work our way down. Uh, an element leader is kind of like what you may have heard called a platoon leader. Um, we'll talk about the PL a lot in Blake's classes and the APL. We're not even getting into assistant platoon leaders in this class, it's, or in this video, it's just such a small group. So the, the element leader of the EL is the guy who's responsible for everybody else. He kind of floats within the formation. He can move up and down and around. Um, he is the big picture guy. Uh, he's got the mission in mind, as everyone should, but he's making his choices based on multitude of factors. Um, he's not the guy up at the front of the formation because that's what the point man does. He's not the guy all the way at the back. Uh, he is somewhere in the middle, able to control, able to see things, um, able to read hand signals from multiple directions, and his responsibilities are just generally overseeing the patrol and the movement. If we conduct something like an ACE report, uh, which we'll talk about more in other videos, um, he would be the one responsible for checking on everybody. He's also gonna get head counts. So we haven't talked about a couple of things. We'll talk about them now because they fit into what the EL does. There's a short halt and a long halt. Short halt hand signal is just the fist up at the shoulder height. Uh, you'll see this in the movies, you know, when everyone takes a knee. Short halt is just, hey, let's hang tight for a second. We need something minor to be done. Um, I'm not gonna give a time limit on it, but we'll just say it's not like we're gonna be there for hours. So, hey, everybody, hold up for a second. Something's going on and everyone takes a knee or gets small, finds micro terrain, whatever it is. But generally, we're still occupying that shape of that formation. We're just hanging tight. A long halt, which is what you see again all over the place, basically means rally up at the point that either the EL has picked or the point man is designating. So we're all moving along in a wedge or whatever it is, and we decide, hey, we need to take a long halt, and people are gonna filter in and form a 360 security and that gives the element leader the ability to check on each person, check his head count, do his ACE report, um, check his map. It's whatever it is he needs done. But again, anyone can call for those things. The guy in the back of the stack may have a problem or have noticed something and can call for that long halt and it's echoed up the chain. And when that element leader gets it, he calls for it and they pick their spot and they, and they figure out where they're actually gonna be. Again, that's circling up uh, we're going to try to find the best spot in these videos. They're doing it in the middle of an open field. We're not teaching you guys to do things in the middle of an open field just because. That's what we're working with so you can see what it looks like without any other obstructions. So what does the point man do? If the element leader is doing all the controlling, roughly speaking, what is the point man doing? Well, it's the riskiest job because you're at the front of the formation. You're going to have first contact generally. And your main responsibility, other than looking for signs of the opponents, is to pick your route. If the point man is bad at what he's doing, he might pick a route that's really dense brush. He might pick a route that has slippery ground, or he sends you guys through a puddle and people get their feet wet unnecessarily. 
things like this, the point man is leading us through what he thinks is the best route based on the formation, based on the mission and other things. Um, it's a really, really important job. And again, just like anyone else, he can call for whatever he needs to call for, whether it's one of the halts, if we're out in a wedge and we're about to pass through a really tight area and he doesn't think based on our dispersion that we can all fit and maintain contact, he may call for that file and everyone can compress down into a file to move through that denser area. That's the kind of things that the point man is looking for. So what about all the other yahoos in these formations? What are they really doing? Well, they're constantly scanning. So they've got to look ahead. They've got to look behind. We have to be looking for hand signals and checking on our buddies, but they're also looking at their sector. So consider any of those formations, whether that's the file, the stagger column, the wedge, guys are looking at a sector out from their position, which could be left or right or some combination therein. But we're not looking at our feet. You know, we're not, we're not pulling security, looking at the stars under our nods. We are looking for any sign of the enemy. We're looking for whatever it is that we're out looking for on this patrol. Um, we're picking our steps carefully. We're looking for pretty much anything other than us. So this is a high stress thing. Um, this is something that, you know, if you're an infantryman um, in the military or even specialized uh, units, you do a lot of this, moving from A to B behind enemy lines or in an, a place where you could get attacked at any time is an extremely stressful thing. So if you're not the point man and you're not the platoon leader, element leader, squad leader, whatever, um, you're pulling security constantly looking at all times for potential problems, maintaining yourself and your buddy looking behind you, looking in front of you. Um, that's kind of the whole concept with these formations is we're trying to protect ourselves 360 at all times while moving. So we've talked about the file, um, again that hand signal, we've talked about the staggered column, and we've talked about the wedge, and there's only three out of a myriad of options. Uh, we didn't talk about echelon left and right, uh, we haven't talked about um, any sort of reactions to contact, what goes bad. We haven't talked about uh, hasty ambushes, setting up L-shapes. This is really just basic 101 stuff. So in the next video, we're going to talk about what if it goes bad, right? We didn't see somebody and they saw us first and now we have to deal with it and that would be reacting to contact. So thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it, that you got something out of it and continue to watch the other videos in the series. If you have questions, comments, concerns, if you have previous experience in this stuff and you want to add something, uh, obviously make it constructive. YouTube can be super toxic and we're trying to change that. I will go in and try to respond to comments for at least the first you know, two to three months that we're doing this. Um, but that being said, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram. Um, it's at Orion underscore training underscore group. Check us out on the Patreon. We also go over all of this stuff on the Patreon, and it's a different format. It's broken down um, a little bit more piecemeal, and I use Legos, uh, which for some of you, that just tickles your brain for some reason. Legos are, are cool. Um, and then, of course, check out the course schedule online. Um, this is filmed right now. We're filming this in January of 24, and in this year, we have 10 classes in Pennsylvania covering these topics with Blake. Um, small unit maneuvering, small unit sustainment, the patrolling with vehicles. We have an off-road class with this stuff. We have these classes live fire with Blake. That's fire and maneuver. So check out the course schedule. We teach open enrollment for American citizens. And um, of course, as we say at the end of most of our videos, repent, turn to Christ, quit watching pornography, eat your veggies, go outside, get some sun, drink water. Thanks for watching.